Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. All of our guests today, including Farhan Lalji, uh, brought to you by our title sponsor, Able Auctions, ableauctions.ca. Have we got Farhan yet? We got yeah, him? He's, he's just getting settled. Okay, let me mention this then. If you own or manage a business anywhere in BC and thinking of closing, let the experts at Able Auctions help to get your business assets sold. Email sales at ableauctions.ca, sales at ableauctions.ca. Hey, you had an update yeah. on Patrick Maroon. <laughs> I, I thought it was a fake account, but it was not a fake account. So we talked about in the last segment about what happened last night. Patrick Maroon did tweet out after the, or this morning, actually, like five minutes ago, in support of those struggling with mental health, bullying, and body image, I'm making a $2,000 donation in the name of Real Jack Edwards to Tampa Bay Thrives, and I encourage Lightning and NHL fans to join me, and then he shared the link as well. So... That's a way to take so the high something positive road. coming out of something yeah. that a lot of people would perceive as negative. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Far, Farhan, Farhan Lalji joins us now. TSN, how are you, sir? Uh, hold on one second. We got him? Oh. Uh, are we good? Henderson got it figured out yet? There, he's there. Oh. He's there. He's there. He's there. Oh. there he is. Okay. Farhan oh. Lalji. Did good you for have, Pat Maroon. Yeah. Did you have any uh, you know, problem with what Jack Edwards had to say last night about? Yeah, Pat totally. He would, look, he was making fun. He was flat out making fun of, of a guy's fitness and weight and um, you know, look, we're in a difficult position because, you know, part of like when you evaluate athletes, fitness is a part of it, right? Like mm -hmm. that's, that's a part of it. So I go back when we think of when the Grizzlies were here and every year, big country Reed would, yep. or big country yep. Reeves would come in and he was overweight. Right. And you'd get to December and he'd play himself back into shape. And after Christmas every year, he was like a 2010 guy, right? Mm -hmm. 20 points, uh, 10, maybe nine rebounds per game. But you wonder, would they have been better if he was like that before? So there's a way to do that. And I know that Zion Williamson in the NBA yeah. has had everybody examine his body left and right from day one. Now, unfortunately, if you're an athlete, your fitness and preparedness is a part of what we're going to have to report on and what you're going to be evaluated on. But there's a way to do that. And what Jack Edwards did last night, was wrong. He was just flat out making fun of Pat Maroon, and that's just completely needless. Yeah, if he would have maybe said something as I rethink things, like you know, conditioning has been an issue for Pat, but he's got himself three Stanley Cup rings. Nobody oh, yeah. bats an eye at it. Uh, I mean, the late Vladimir Krutov took all sorts of heat for <laughs> uh, for coming uh, in, into uh, well the two seasons he was here uh, overweight. I think you know when it comes to big country, you did wonder like what if he was in shape all the time what what you know what are the possibilities for him he underachieved i don't think pat maroon is uh, underachieved so there's a difference there how much did the fan in you farhan enjoy watching what ovi was up to last night at rogers arena yeah it's pretty impressive you know you you think that gretzky just kind of put every record and every milestone out of sight and when you see what ovechkin's doing and you know closing in on the most hallowed record in hockey uh, it's impressive, right? It it really is. And, you know, even when you see some of the things McDavid does right now, you, you wonder if there's longevity and health there, whether or not he can approach some of those milestones. But what Ovi is doing, scoring is a hard thing to do. And generally, he kind of does it one way, and he plays a messy game, right? Like people, people used to talk about that with uh, Peter Forsberg, that he played a messy game because he was always in the mix everywhere, right? And wasn't afraid to hit back and do different things. And sometimes – that leads to a lot of health issues, and certainly Forsberg had health issues that derailed his career. Ovi's just continued to fight through it all. And then he plays, you know, in his office, and you know he's going to be there, and you know how to take it away, but you can't. So there's just so many neat elements to what he's doing. And I remember early in his career, uh, and Gretzky was coaching at the time in Phoenix, and he talked about how much – this kid loves to score. And he's not a kid now, but Gretzky said that to me then one time when he was in Vancouver. And he said, I thought I love scoring, but that guy loves scoring. And he shows that right now with the way he plays. Like he celebrates every goal like it's his first. And I think I think Kuzmenko probably rubs off on that if, with the celebration, if nothing else. Just loves to score. Uh, far a bad first period last night, first game back from a road trip. And, you know, some are going to say, yeah, that was expected. But uh, uh, there you go, three-game winning streak. And now, you know, some of the bad stuff we saw in the first period, uh, defensive zone breakdowns, and, and away we go again. Yeah, and that's the hard part with this Canuck team. It's impossible to believe. They can win five out of six, and it's impossible to believe because the extremes 
are so stark with this team. And even in their one loss, that loss to Vegas, uh, I think second or third game of the road trip, right? Like they were awful in their own end. Yeah, it was 5-4, but they were awful in their own end. And, uh, you know, and here they were again in the first period last night, right? I mean, it, it was the first five minutes were really, really bad. And then, and then you know, Hughes spills the puck, you know, right to OV. Like the mistakes they make, you just shouldn't make at this level. And it, it just becomes so difficult to believe they can get on any kind of a an extended run and, and really get into this thing. I mean, you know, could they could they win five out of six the rest of the way and, and on a 600 clip? Like, I just don't think they can, even though they did last year, because there's always going to be those games. And last year, Thatcher Demko, when he was healthy, could bail them out of some of those games, right? The goaltending hasn't been good enough. Martin's been better than Demko, but Martin hasn't been elite. He hasn't stolen games for them. So I, I, I just tr- have trouble with it because – Again, there's just no consistency to their game at all. Uh, let's turn over to football. You've had uh, a lot of interesting CFL tidbits this week. Uh, Winnipeg mm-hmm. uh, re-signing their head coach, uh, the Blue Bombers. Mm-hmm. What about Nathan Rourke? Uh, his agent told me Monday that the NFL tryouts are starting this week. Any uh, info on how he's doing? Yeah, those tryouts are going to start on Friday. And, yep. um, you know, they've got to kind of make a decision because they've taken two weeks off from what their original timeline was or almost two weeks. So, one of the reasons they originally had the schedule they did is they wanted to space the workouts out. They didn't want to get him into a situation where he had to do like, you know, five workouts in seven days or something like that. And I know they talked about there being a flu, but you, you know they wanted his foot to get into the right spot. And, you know, certainly he's, he's much healthier now. I'm curious to see, um, you know, what the schedule looks like, where they open with and whether or not they are able to, uh, to um, separate all those things out so that he can put his best foot forward as it were, right? Um, Farhan, we talked about this earlier with Ian Furness, but what did the Seahawks know about uh, Russell Wilson that the Broncos didn't? And we hear these stories of Sierra throwing him a birthday party early this week and half the team showed up. Um, you know, I think what the Seahawks got tired of was the, the, the drama, the constant maintenance and, and, you know, what was turning into a diva act, right? And how he did put himself above the team on so many levels when he was here. And, you know, I remember covering the first day of Broncos training camp when he was there and the whole Sierra entourage moment happened midway through the practice when everything stopped mm-hmm. and all the, the attention went over there and then practice ended and everybody else had gone in and they'd begun treatment and everything like that. And Russell was still outside for 45 minutes with his social media team and pictures and family and all this stuff. And, you know, so regardless of what you're seeing on the football field, that's what the Seahawk organization, top to bottom, tired of. Right. And I remember talking to a really, really respected reporter in Denver who's been there forever. And he's like, look, the Seahawks are wrong, because if you've got one of those guys and by those guys, he was talking about elite, elite quarterbacks, Mm -hmm. you better do everything you can to keep him and you got to suck it up. And if that's happening, you suck it up as long as you're winning and he's performing because everybody in the league is trying to get that type of guy. And, you know, I, I visited with him recently and he was just like, wow, holy cow, like. Were you ever right? And and that's the that's the challenge. So I read the deep dive in USA Today the other day, or sorry, in ESPN, mm-hmm. um, about where it's gone wrong in the different areas of his game, you know, because he's they've been so bad in the red zone, but there are other areas where he just hasn't been as good, whether it's the play action game, whether it's the deep ball, uh, third downs. There's been so many areas where it's, it's not there. And can he get it back? He can. I just don't know that he will this year. I think he needs to remove himself from this and the whole group does. And, you know, health of the team is also a part of it. But, you know, when you ask the question, what did they know that maybe Mm -hmm. others didn't, it wasn't about what you're seeing on the field. It's about all the rest that everybody just got so tired of. Farhan, thanks for this. Appreciate it. Talk to you next week. All right, fellas. Enjoy. You bet.